It's just a few days after payday and you're already stressed about money. It's not you. A problem is actually your routine. And here are the powerful 8-step payday routine that is going to change that for good. Personally, I've struggled with living paycheck to paycheck myself. And in this video, I will share the exact routine that helped me to gain control of my finances. finances. These steps are actually divided into two groups. The first four are things that you will do before payday and they are actually the heavy lifters. And while the second four or the second group are things that you will do after payday. So let's start. Have you ever been in a situation where you were expecting, let's say, £2,000 to hit your account on payday and at the end of a hard-working month, instead of receiving £2,000, let's say you received £1,800. I have been there and the emotions you feel can be so overwhelming from confusion to disappointment, frustration, maybe even a little bit of anger and that's justified. It's like all the work that you've done has just vanished into thin air. There are reasons why many companies make sure that your payslip is available to you days or at worst on your payday, but not after your payday. There are reasons like to allow you actually review the details of your pay before you receive it, which will allow you to verify the accuracy of your gross pay, the deductions and your net pay. Another reason why companies give us access to our payslip before payday is so that if there are issues, you could easily and quickly bring the attention to your payroll department on time to get it rectified. So take advantage of this and do the first step, which is to check your payslip as soon as you get it. And the reason why you do that is for all the reasons that I mentioned earlier. Now you've checked your payslip, right? Your payslip is in order. But have you heard that phrase that says, failure to plan is planning to fail? Yes, step two is all about putting a plan together. But before you even start planning or before I show you what this planning is all about, you must first know one thing and that is to know your financial flow. This is very important and a powerful number to know. Your financial flow is you understanding your absolute minimum financial requirements to survive. It's essentially the essential expenses that you need to meet your basic needs. You know, things like your housing payments, either rent or mortgage, things like transportation that you need to go to work and come back home, things like food, affordable groceries, not going overboard, right? Your utilities, your gas, your electric, your, your internet, and most importantly, paying off the minimum debt if you do have any of that. And and lastly, for countries where you have to fund your own healthcare, things like having the minimum to handle any medical emergency, maybe in the form of insurance. Now, all of this is your financial flow. And the rule of thumb is that it should not be more than 50 to 60% of your net income. That means that if you earn 2,000 pounds, your financial flow should be between 1,000 and a thousand two hundred pounds you can easily calculate this using our free template that will be linked in the description but if your financial flow is over 60 percent like i've seen with a lot of people that have reached out to me the best thing to do is to look for opportunities where you can swap one of the items on that call list with a cheaper option maybe you're living in an apartment you can downsize or rent an extra room to give you an extra income once you have this on lockdown you can then continue with the rest of your plan or budget make sure that you include things like savings investment fund money that's very important giving very very important and also miscellaneous which a lot of people tend to overlook if i have to choose a type of budget or plan that i'll go with i'll go with the zero based budget but that's up to you but any plan or budget is better than having none step three and step four are actually linked and they are one of those things that you do once and you forget a lot of people unintentionally tend to make things more complex than they need to be and there is a name for this it's called the complexity bias and it describes our tendency as humans to favor complex explanations 
over simpler ones. Studies have shown this bias in various decision-making scenarios. So how do we avoid this in our payday routine? The first part is to make sure that you have multiple accounts and they are linked. At the minimum, you should have a savings account, investment account, a spending account and your current account or checking account as our friends in the US call it where your income comes in. Like me, you can decide that your current and spending account will be one and the same, which is fine. I have heard of people that have had multiple of the same accounts, like having multiple savings and investment accounts. The second part to this is to make sure that all these accounts are actually linked to your current account with direct debit and standing order. And the most important important part is to set a date that the money will go out of your current account after you've been paid into those accounts. And that takes us nicely to step 4. Now if you've done all that I've said from step 4 on and 3, what you have done essentially is to set up and activate an automatic money system. Here is how it works. As you get paid, the money you have allocated to some of your expenses guided by your budget or plan and I mean the direct debits and standing orders that you've created in the previous steps are activated on the date that you've chosen. And on that day, the money leaves your current account automatically without you interfering with the process and it goes into those accounts. And this is possible because those expenses are actually fixed expenses. And that means that you know these expenses way ahead of time and they are the same month in, month out. You know, things like your rent. Your rent doesn't change every month. Your utility bill, if you set up like a direct debit with them, that's usually constant. These expenses don't change. And even if they do, it usually happens like maybe once a year when they are being reviewed. Once all of that has been taken care of, then what you have left is actually your variable expense like food, transports, gifts, fund money, things like that. These expenses are not fixed and while you might have allocated a budget to them, it's not 100% certain that you would spend that exact amount and that is where step 6 that will come to comes into play where you will track and monitor these expenses. So for example, let's say out of your £2,000 monthly income, £1,004 fixed expense and you've done direct debits and all of that, the remaining balance you have will be 600 and that's what you have as variable expense to spend for the remaining parts of the month. The question now is how do you make sure that what is left, that's 600 pounds, right, is enough till the end of the month? And that's where step five of this payday routine comes into play to make sure that you're in a good place from the first of the month till the last day of the month. And there are two ways that have worked for me. One is to track your expense as you go in the month and you track it in line with the budget that you've created in step two. You can do this either manually or using an, in an app like Snoop, which links with your bank accounts and your cards, right? Making it a lot easier to track expenses. But you can also do this manually using a spreadsheet, which is what I would actually recommend if you're just starting for the first time, because there is something that has to do with you doing it, writing it down, checking and building that muscle, or just using a plain old pen and paper. I have a link to the Wealthy Post World Track in the description below to help with tracking your expenses. The second way to do this, especially if you don't want to budget, is to actually set a weekly spending limit. Using our example, let's say you you have 600 pounds left and there are four weeks in a month you can decide oh that means that i'm going to spend 150 pounds weekly as my expense for four weeks that gives you 600 pounds this is simpler to manage and you don't have to worry about tracking every expense after that the sixth step is to then monitor and adjust as you go in the month if you've decided to go the budget route which some people actually prefer you know how much you're spending in each category, which is an advantage. And if you calculate this in percentages, it gives you a good picture of how much of your life or your income you're spending towards each category and whether you should reduce it or whether you should increase it. You can also make decisions because, for example, let's say by the second week, you've used up your gifts and giving money. Then someone asks you to borrow some money or to give them some money. Because you know you've used that up, you could say, oh, okay, I can't fulfill this. But let's say in two weeks time, when you know you will be paid and you will refresh, 
your giving account, I'll be able to help out with this. But if you choose the weekly spending limits option, you simply make decisions and adjust based on how close you are to your spending limits. The seventh step is to adjust promptly. If you've done step one to six properly, you will begin to see patterns emerge in your spending. Maybe your fixed cost is too much that you don't have enough to handle some important variable expense like your feeding or you have extra that you can add to your savings or be more aggressive with your debts or you're not making enough progress with your debts but you're investing so then because you've seen this you now decide to stop investing for the time being so that you can laser focus on paying off your debts as quick as possible whatever it is it is it's going to be unique for different people because of everyone's unique situation but you are going to have actionable decisions and insights as a result of that that would make your finances a lot better these decisions would actually take you back to step two that you can adjust your budget and plan another aspect of adjusting has to do with future expenses that doesn't fall into your monthly plan or budget like those one-off spendings that you have to make the last step is to actually enjoy enjoy ourselves knowing that we have the perfect payday routine right and that we are also intentional what with our finances the concept of being intentional is actually driven on by the book your money or your life this book really explains that when you spend money you are not just spending money but you're actually spending your life's energy and what does that even mean you spend an amount of your life to earn that money so when you spend that money to buy stuff, you're actually spending your life to buy that stuff. Having this in mind helps us to be mindful of how we spend and also makes us very, very intentional. If you'd like to watch my book review of your money or your life, click the video on your screen now. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, see you in the next one.